Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless we now live in an isaiah 520 world where evil is good and good is evil where the sin of being a homosexual or transgender is openly celebrated and even glorified one of the many signs that we are living in the end times is the epidemic of homosexuality that is sweeping the world today Jesus said he would return at a time when society parallels the days of Lot, as we read in Luke 17, 28 through 30. Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so will it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. To find out what parallels our days with the days of Lot, we need to go back to the book of Genesis. Genesis 19, 1 through 5. Now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground, and said, My lords, please turn aside to your servant's house and spend the night and wash your feet. Then you may rise up early and go on your way. They said, No, we will spend the night in the town square. But he pressed them strongly, so they turned aside to him and entered his house. And he made them a feast and baked unleavened bread, and they ate. But before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both young and old, all the people to the last man, surrounded the house. And they called to Lot, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us, that we may know them. The term know them isn't a friendly handshake and how are you. It is to know them in a sexual way. What parallels our days with the days of Lot is homosexuality. Just as in the days of Lot, not only is homosexuality widely accepted today, but it's being taught to our kids just like in Sodom, as we read in verse 4. The men of the city, the men of Sodom, both young and old, all the people to the last man, surrounded the house. Young is the Hebrew word, nar, which means a boy from the age of infancy to adolescence. Anger over an LGBT club for kids in third to sixth grade. Parents are saying the school kept the club secret and complain of receiving no notification that it was happening. Parents at Elk Grove's Pleasant Grove Elementary School say they were alarmed to discover a third grade teacher was allowed to personally invite all the third through sixth grade classes to a new LGBT club he was starting called the UBU Club. Education activist Heidi Moore discusses the club. Their children were essentially being recruited, some as young as second grade, um, by a teacher there. Um, it was a club for boys who crush on boys or girls who crush on girls, but that anyone could come because there were fun games that you couldn't find anywhere else. Moore says permission slips were required for all other clubs and that all available activities were listed in the weekly newsletter. Everything they did was very obviously trying to hide it from parents because they didn't require permission slips. They didn't tell parents. They didn't put it in the newsletter and they held it at lunchtime. The club's organizer, teacher Daniel Bishop, shared a photo on Facebook of a t-shirt that reads, I'm the teacher Fox News warns you about, writing, I think I found my back-to-school shirt. Parents took their complaints and questions to the Elk Grove Unified School Board at a school board meeting earlier this month. This board has created a district culture where child sexualization isn't the exception, it's the rule. The establishment of a gay club in elementary school raises concerns about age appropriateness. While fostering inclusivity is vital, it's crucial to evaluate the developmental readiness of our children's young minds for such discussions. While I understand the importance of providing a safe space for all, I am deeply troubled by the intentional deception regarding the UBU Club. If this school board had existed in 2005, you'd all be the villains in an episode of Criminal Minds. In email communication with parents, Pleasant Grove principal Deidre Wood wrote that the club was accidentally left out of the newsletter and would be mentioned in a future newsletter. Wood also said the purpose of the UBU club is to provide a safe, accepting space for students of the LGBT community. According to Moore, third graders are far too young to be discussing sexuality. If you want to talk to your children about that, 
um, then that's your right. And just like it's any other parent's right to be in control of when they talk to their kids about sexuality and how they do it. And when the school is secretly going around to second and third graders and recruiting them to a club that involves um, sexual orientation and possible conversations, private conversations about their sexual orientation, and then being told to keep secrets, that's super concerning. And it's a huge red flag. Homosexuality is strongly condemned in the Bible. Ezekiel 16, 49 through 50. Look, this was the iniquity of your sister Sodom. She and her daughter had pride, fullness of food, and an abundance of idleness. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. And they were haughty and committed abomination before me. Therefore I took them away as I saw fit. What was this prideful abomination committed before God? The answer is found in the book of Leviticus. Leviticus 18.22 you shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. Leviticus 20.13 If a man lies with a male as he lies with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. God gives mankind a dire warning for the acts of homosexuality in 2 Peter 2.6 And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemn them to destruction, making them an example to those who afterward would live ungodly. God also offers forgiveness to those who are living a life of homosexuality as we read in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor the covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers, will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. In the United States and South Korean militaries are wrapping up large-scale war games this week. As CBN's Dale Hurd reports, this comes amid heightened concerns over the threat of conflict with a nuclear-armed North Korea. Is North Korean leader Kim Jong-un about to go to war with South Korea and the United States? Some experts think it's possible. Kim has ordered his military to prepare for the occupation of South Korea and is, according to some, engaged in frantic military development. And after South Korea and the United States began the Freedom Shield 24 exercises designed to deter a North Korean invasion, it only caused Kim to issue more threats of war. The task of North Korean experts has always been to try to separate bluster from real threats. And in the past, it's usually been bluster. Bong Young-shik at the Institute for North Korean Studies in Seoul says it's bluster, meant to undermine the current South Korean government from winning parliamentary elections in April. A disturbing report earlier this year by the respected 38 North website, however, indicates this time Kim may be serious. 38 North reports Kim Jong-un has made a strategic decision to go to war because the communist government sees a window of opportunity to forcibly reunify the Korean peninsula. If the report is true, Asian expert Gordon Chang believes it would be part of a wider Asian war. North Korea wouldn't go to war unless it got the approval of both Moscow and Beijing. So probably um, if North Korea were to attack South Korea, it would be in conjunction with China attacking Japan, Taiwan, Philippines, India. Concerns about North Korea's nuclear program have grown in the past two years, as the North has test-launched missiles at a record pace and openly threatened to launch a nuclear attack on the United States. Chang does not necessarily agree that North Korea is preparing for war, but says if it is, the blame falls on the White House for appearing weak.
an important part of this article that I believe is absolutely true, and that is uh, the authors maintain that Kim Jong-un believes that the United States is in global retreat and that essentially he can pretty much do what he wants. That is a very dangerous mentality. And this is a thinking that also affects Vladimir Putin and Xi Jinping. The United States needs to reestablish deterrence because at this moment, uh, the bad actors think that they have a green light. And back here right now, lawmakers are looking for answers after warnings that the U.S. is not keeping up to China when it comes to hypersonic weapons, missiles that can move faster than the speed of sound and dodge traditional defense systems. Chief National Security Correspondent Jennifer Griffin reports live from the Pentagon. A House Armed Services subcommittee is holding a hearing right now on U.S. and adversary hypersonic capabilities. Those are weapons able to move five times the speed of sound, in other words, one mile per second, and can overwhelm or evade traditional missile defenses. There are many existing ballistic missile systems Systems that travel at hypersonic speeds, but China and some believe Russia have more advanced hypersonic weapons than the U.S. right now. Chinese systems include hypersonic glide vehicles, which maneuver through the atmosphere after an initial ballistic launch phase. Beijing is also developing hypersonic cruise missiles that use air-breathing engines, such as scramjets, to reach high speeds and maneuver, according to Defense News. The Army's multi-billion-dollar Dark Eagle program is an effort to quickly advance U.S. hypersonic capabilities. On Saturday, a private U.S. defense company, Stratolaunch, says it successfully completed the first powered flight of its reusable hypersonic test vehicle. The private VC-funded hypersonic weapon for the first time tested a hypersonic rocket engine made by Ursa Major. Because the test vehicle is reusable, this makes testing hypersonic weapons not only cheaper, but also faster. This means hypersonic testing in the U.S. can become more routine. Citing the fact that China and Russia are feeling conventional long-range and hypersonic weapons, President Biden's fiscal year 2025 budget requests include $9.8 billion to deliver a mix of hypersonic and long-range subsonic missiles called long-range fires. This year's Pentagon budget request is only a 1 percent increase from last year's, as China's military is boosting its budget by 7.2 percent. Russia, China and Iran have taken part in joint naval drills in a sign of deepening military cooperation between the three powers. The exercises took place in the Gulf of Oman and also involved the UAE, with several other countries participating as observers. They included guided missile destroyers and frigates, as well as support vessels and combat boats. Iran has stepped up its military ties with Beijing and Moscow in recent years, amid rising tensions with the U.S. Well, across Europe, leaders are calling Russia the greatest and most urgent threat facing the continent. Germany's intelligence chief warned recently that Putin would not hesitate to attack a NATO member. The alliance is scrambling to prepare for a direct military confrontation with Moscow. Dr. Simon Anglem, a leading British military expert and professor at the Department of War Studies at King's College in London, worries that his country's armed forces are not ready for a war with Russia. What keeps me awake at night is the possibility of direct attacks on the United Kingdom, possibly by missiles or long-range bombers. Since Russia's 2022 invasion of Ukraine, NATO militaries have been getting ready to fight. In January, the alliance launched Steadfast Defender 24, its largest military exercise since the Cold War. It seems as though we are on the verge of World War III. Jesus told us in the last days there would be war between the nations. Are we seeing the stage setting taking place to fulfill this prophecy? If so, then we're close to the time Jesus refers to as the worst time in the history of the world as we read in Matthew 24, 21. For then there will be great tribulation such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. If we are that close to the tribulation, then the world is about to see war the likes of this planet has never seen before. The book of Revelation tells us when Jesus breaks the first seal, the Antichrist will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the second seal, war will be unleashed. Resulting from these wars will be famine, pestilence, and death as Jesus breaks the third and fourth seals. The Bible tells us 25% of the population of the earth will be killed at this time, as we read in Revelation 6, 8. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was Death, 
and Hades followed with him, and power was given to them over a fourth of the earth, to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. The population of the world is roughly 8 billion, meaning 2 billion people will die during this time. The remaining 17 judgments of God include devastating earthquakes, cosmic disturbances, scorching heat, meteors, 100 pound hailstones, volcanic eruptions, loathsome sores on those who take the mark of the beast, the seas, rivers, and springs of water turn to blood, demons torturing mankind, and a 200 million strong demonic army who will kill another third of mankind, bringing the total to 4 billion. Luke 21:25. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. One of the many signs we are living in the last days right before the return of Jesus Christ is nations will be in a state of perplexity or uncertainty over what to do in a difficult situation. This is exactly what is happening in our world today. Now the latest on the chaos in Haiti. An anti-terrorism team of U.S. Marines has just been sent to the capital of Port-au-Prince to help protect the U.S. Embassy there. Heavily armed gangs control much of the city and there is a political vacuum after the country's prime minister said he will resign. While Haiti's political crisis plays out, more than a million people are now on the brink of famine. That's coming from the World Food Programme, which is struggling to feed them. It's a losing battle because the country, and especially the capital, are cut off from outside supplies. Uh, Port-au-Prince is essentially in a bubble. The roads in and out of Port-au-Prince have been uh, controlled by armed groups for a long time. These past few days, the ports have been closed and uh, there have been no incoming flights. And we're seeing food prices rise. We're seeing uh, scarcity uh, of some food items. Gangs are in control of vast swathes of the capital. It's them choking off the entryways. They've been doing it for years, but it's escalated in recent weeks as they've clamored for Prime Minister Ariel Henry to quit. Now he says he'll go as soon as an interim Prime Minister is named. But as that political crisis plays out, people are struggling to provide for their families. Duchere Reginald lives in Sansville, one of the poorer parts of the capital. They've been especially affected by food shortages. The problem of hunger is very difficult for me and for all Haitians. I live with five children as well as my mother, all of whom I take care of and feed every day. It's no small matter. This is the worst experience in life. We live in a country where people's rights are not respected. Haitian children especially are at risk. Even before the recent escalation in violence, one in four suffered from chronic malnutrition. And the World Food Programme says it's now running through its reserves. Once those give out, things could get worse. The children in Port-au-Prince, the most vulnerable part of the population, are at great, greatest risk. Uh, in the commune of Croix de Bouquet in Port-au-Prince, you've got malnutrition rates that are as high as they are, they are in, in war zones. The hope of some is that once a transition government's established, the country can reopen and supplies can get where they need to be. But that appears to depend as much on the gangs as the politicians. A powerful, unpredictable force in the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. People in rural communities in Nigeria's Karuna state are scared. Days after the kidnap of more than 280 school children in Kuriga, what they call bandits have struck again in Buda village. Dozens of people were taken. Jamila Nuhu narrowly escaped. They ordered me out of the house to carry their loot. It was heavy. I also had my baby on my back. When soldiers arrived, the bandits panicked. I seized the opportunity, dropped the load and ran. A few others also got free. They drove us out like cattle to the outskirts of the village when the military arrived. We ran into an orchard. That's how some of us escaped, but my wife and stepmother did not. They're being held by bandits along with 58 others. People here say if the soldiers had not arrived, everyone in the village could have been abducted. Villagers say dozens of attackers arrived just before midnight and went from house to house seizing men, women and children. This is the third attack in Kaduna state within one week and follows the kidnap of 287 school children. The number of abductions in Nigeria's north has increased. At least 600 people have been kidnapped in the region this month. An overstretched security service is struggling to contain the lawlessness sweeping across many Nigerian states. The government is keen to reassure people. But villagers say gunmen roam freely in many parts of northern Nigeria, imposing what they call taxes 
and their own laws on helpless villages. And it seems there is little to stop them. Is global chaos the new normal? As anyone can plainly see, the world is in a state of decay, moral, economic, political, every way possible. People are saying the world is out of control and looking for someone, anyone, to rescue the planet. Soon, very soon, a leader will appear on the horizon that appears to have all the answers, to calm the oceans, to bring peace to all the nations. His title will be the Antichrist, and he will be welcomed by millions of those on earth not taken with the rapture. Unfortunately, his true identity will be known soon to those left behind that his true intentions are death, destruction, and control. So yes, global chaos is the new normal until the Lord Jesus Christ comes at the end of the Antichrist's seven-year reign of terror and establishes true peace on earth. Jesus, speaking to his disciples about the signs of his coming and the end of the age, declares this in Matthew 24, 12. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The Bible tells us lawlessness is the violation of God's commandments, as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another, for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. So this is a, this is a brutal story. There was a fight between two 15-year-old girls in Missouri. One is now in critical condition, fighting for her life. Mm. The state's AG is calling on the other teen to be charged and tried as an adult. Bill, it is certainly gruesome. Missouri Attorney General Andrew Bailey is calling for a 15-year-old girl to be tried as an adult after she's seen on camera repeatedly smashing another 15-year-old uh, girls head into the ground. We're going to show you part of that video. Take a look. So you see the two 15 year olds get into a fight. The suspect takes the victim down and then punches her repeatedly in the face. The suspect then gets on top of the victim. We pause the video before she smashes her head into the ground several times. It then appears the victim has a seizure. See in the video is an attacker who repeatedly bashes the victim's head into the hard pavement, has multiple opportunities to disengage from the fight, but in, clearly intends to inflict serious physical injury. And a youth of this age who commits an adult crime needs to be tried as an adult, and the law is clear on this point. The St. Louis County Police Department tells Fox, quote, responding officers located a juvenile female suffering a severe head injury. The victim was transported to an area hospital where she remains in critical condition. Attorney General Bailey says if the victim dies, the suspect should be charged with homicide. The Apostle Paul in his epistle to Timothy tells us in the last days society will be in a total immoral meltdown. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. Well, if you watch the news, you've seen the videos. Mobs of people breaking into stores, smashing displays, filling bags with loot. A surge in retail crime has cities across America scrambling to find solutions. The nation's capital and other big cities see this as a major crime problem. Shoplifting has exploded into large-scale theft, and the often resulting violence is keeping customers away. In the end, it's consumers left holding the bag as prices skyrocket and many stores set up shop somewhere else. You've seen the videos. You can see right there just clearing the shelves. From brazen shoplifters to smash and grab mobs, the images are sweeping the internet. Never before have we seen the number of CEOs, executives, and even community leaders reach out and highlight the dangers that are taking place in the retail industry 
While shoplifting remains a major challenge, a new phenomenon is hitting so-called brick-and-mortar stores. About 90% of our organized retail crime cases involve some type of online selling platform. Homeland Security believes that's due to organized criminal gangs with ties to drug trafficking, who steal the merchandise then sell it online. There are crime syndicates that could be tied to local gang networks that maybe have established uh, networks either from the Chilean or Colombian threats or Romanian crews coming in from Eastern European that are comfortable in certain cities. Stores are losing big money, raising prices to cover it, and the greatest cost could be to the safety of workers. Whether gangs or individuals, 90% of retailers say thieves are much more aggressive now compared to a year ago. They're getting more comfortable with it because they know that we're not allowed to, that we won't chase after them. Violent incidents alone are up by more than a third. As a result, stores are cutting hours, adding security and keeping products under lock and key. You go to a CVS in New York City, everything's locked up. Good, good luck getting a toothpaste. CVS is among those closing key locations like this one in Washington, D.C., where thieves recently carried out merchandise in giant trash bags. 52 restaurants to close their doors in Washington, D.C. this year. The cycle is also affecting eating establishments, with dozens recently closing their doors, citing safety concerns. Mark police cruisers getting carjacked. Um, uh, ambulances. Uh, we had an American Red Cross van that was supposed to feed uh, the homeless the other day get carjacked. As communities seek solutions, huge financial losses continue to mount. Nationwide, the latest National Retail Federation survey shows more than $100 billion in losses in 2023, $20 billion more than the year before. The cost of organized retail crime and shoplifting is soon expected to top $140 billion, with consumers ultimately footing the bill to the tune of $500 per person every year. One of the many signs that we are living in the end times is the epidemic of wickedness and violence that is sweeping the world today. Jesus tells us when society parallels the days of Noah, he will return as we read in Matthew 24, 37 through 39. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. So what was going on in Noah's day that parallels our day? To find out the answer, we need to go back to the book of Genesis 6, 5-13. through 13. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing, and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God, and Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. There is no doubt about the hour in which we live being the season for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ as we link Matthew 24, verses 12 and 37 through 39 with 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. The Bible describes our day very clearly from these scriptures. The condition of wickedness and violence that caused the earth to be destroyed in Noah's day is the same condition our earth is in today. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus. 
paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.